record on his computer. And yeah, there it goes. Okay. So I just want to welcome Darren um, Williams. He is a member of 121 Faith Church. I'm so excited that um, he's allowing me to interview him because he is like one of my newest favorite teachers. So, um, so I'm going to go ahead and pray in and we're going to get started. Okay. So dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your grace and your mercy. And we just thank you for this opportunity to worship in your name. We thank you for the word that's going to be spoken today through this interview and allow us to give wisdom so people can grow in their faith as we edify you in your name only. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Okay, so like I said, um, Darren Williams is a member of One to One Faith Church. He serves on the uh, the praise and worship team, and um, he also teaches. So I just want to know when did you what when did you decide to give your life to Christ? I think that is like something that even though people say they're Christians, but I think that when you give your life to Christ. Mm -hmm. I think it's different because that means that you are following his teachings. You want to be a disciple of Jesus, not a disciple to a church, but a disciple mm -hmm. to Jesus and to God's word, which requires obedience and which is very difficult for many Christians to do. So I want to know your story. How did you give your life to Christ? Right. Um, so I would say that, you know, kind of, you know, just growing up, you know, I've, I grew up in the church, like my parents took me to the church every Sunday. Um, I got baptized when I was seven years old, I believe. Um, yeah, I, I had accepted Jesus, my Lord and Savior when I was seven. Um, and I always did. I think I always, you know, growing up, you know, I believed in God and I believed in Jesus. Um, you know, even, 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 you know, I, I would, you know, say these prayers, you know, these kind of short prayers, you know, I think every night, you know, just asking God to, you know, keep me uh, from having bad dreams, stuff like that. So there is always that belief in Jesus and God, even though when I was younger, but, you know, I would, I wasn't really, I would, I wouldn't say that, you know, God was my focal point at that time, you know, I was focusing on, you know, stuff that you know regular kids you know during that age you know high school middle school you know they focus on you know school and you know girls and sports like that so i would say that i dedicated really dedicated my life when um i was in college um yeah that was really the turning point um you know so i went to college and i think i had started I came across, you know, some videos about like, you know, kind of the end times events, like, you know, the book of Revelation and stuff like that. And, you know, it kind of, it kind of really got me thinking like, cause you know, this, this stuff seemed like serious, but even, even initially, you know, it wasn't really like, you know, I really want to, uh, you know, give my whole life to Jesus and, you know, really go all in for Jesus. But I just recall this one message that I listened to and it was really about, he basically the guy that I listened to, I guess he was considered like a watchman or something like that. And um, basically he was talking about how, you know, America had went, went away from God and, you know, basically how America was eventually going to be under judgment and stuff like that. And I listened to that. And I really feel like the Holy Spirit spoke to me through that. And it really touched me because like, I think at, after that, after that point, because before that point, you know, I was watching, I was watching these, you know, really bad horror movies, with like a lot of blood and gore. And I was listening to, you know, this ungodly rap music and stuff like that. And after that point, like, I just couldn't listen to the, 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 the ungodly music and the horror movies. I couldn't handle it anymore. And I think there was just this change where, you know, I just really started following after god after that you know i mean there are times where you know i kind of backslid and, and and uh you know did some dumb made some dumb mistakes but i would definitely say at that point was when i really really started deciding to follow god so yeah it's been i think that was in 20 
late 2010, I think. So, yeah, that's kind of my, uh, kind of my how I uh, decided to follow Christ. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I mean, I, I definitely get really encouraged when I see um, the younger generation, uh, especially in their 20s, just really have the heart for the Lord because I know in my 20s, I wasn't doing that. <laughs> um, but I, but for me, it was very difficult for me to connect with the church because of um, issues that we will definitely talk later on during our interview when we talk about race and church. I think that was the, the big issue for me because there was a lot of still church segregation when it came to the white and black churches. Um, but that's a different subject. Um, so we want to focus on you and God. Um, so my biggest thing is like, what are the biggest challenges that you are facing as a Christ follower? And that could be, I know like when I started giving my life to Christ, which was, um, I started returning to church full time in 2014. So I gave my life in 2015. So honestly, I've been a, as, as old as I am, I'm still, I came to Christ at a later age. But anyway, and, um, and I have people actually challenging me and basically other Christians, like, you, you, do you want this? Do you want to do this? And, and so I challenge, I have faced those challenges in my 40s. I cannot imagine what challenges you're facing in your 20s. I'm, you're in your 20s, right? <laughs> so, yes, um, I mean, you look, I, mean, I was like, well, I don't think you're in your 30s, but I still want to clarify that because anyway. Um, so I'm just like wondering what challenges are you facing nowadays for being a 20 year old who is following Christ and being obedient and, and, in, in that, in that aspect? Um, I guess as far as challenges, like, I guess my challenges, it's not really so much from, I guess, other people trying to kind of pull me, you know, this way or, or that way. Cause I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm really an introvert. So I don't really, I'm not a really social person, honestly, like, but, um, I guess as far as, you know, challenges, you know, definitely I would say that, you know, there are temptations, you know, especially, you know, being kind of in the younger age group, um, you know, cause I mean, you see people doing all these things and, you know, sometimes, especially, especially earlier when I, you know, started walking with God, you know, there, there are times where, you know, you know, I, I honestly, you know, want to do this, even though I know what's wrong. I want to go to this, you know, nightclub and stuff like that and have fun and everything. But, you know, and at times I, I, I did make that mistake go, you know, at times. But um, I think now, right now, like, I think the main challenge for me is to, I guess, not get distracted, you know, by things, you know, in the world, whether it's, you know, what's happening in the, in the news or what's happening in the world. But, you know, yeah, I just really just trying to stay focused on the kingdom of God because, you know, I think Matthew chapter six says, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things that I need will be added to me. Um, yeah. Also, I'm, I guess, you know, another challenge is like, you know, when you fail, like if you, if you feel like, you know, you failed in an area or something like that, like it's, it's, it can be easy to get, you know, discouraged and like, Oh God can't use me because I, I failed in this area or that area, or I didn't do something enough, like I didn't fast enough, or I didn't, I'm not praying enough, or something like that, and you can get, feel like, oh, maybe I need to just, you know, increase all that, but, you know, I think, at least for me, I have to realize that, you know, God has a plan for me, and, and you know, as long as I'm, you know, doing the best that I can, you know, God's going to get me where he needs me to be so definitely i would say it's a challenge to uh, you know just really trust god and even in my failures you know know that god has grace for my failures so yes yeah, that's, that's that's what i would say oh that's that that is awesome and i definitely know those challenges in um the 20s because i fell into um and um what the devil what satan wanted me to do um going out mm. to clubs and drinking and um 
so and, and w w that's another subject <laughs> but i'm so but as a as a christian and a christ follower as well i'm so proud of you i just want to let you know that and mm -hmm. uh, and give yourself grace because the lord yeah. has grace too so um so you're a musician which with one to one faith um uh, you have such a great musical ministry out there. I've seen you grow within the church in your your music and your talent and your confidence. And I'm pretty sure you you had always had those confidence. But when you're coming into a new church, new people, <laughs> you know, no one knows you and no one knows your ability. So I'm pretty sure it, it took a while for you to uh, shake off some of those. Um, what you think is criticism but we're sitting here and say wow i i know for me i'm like i wish i could be up there uh but i can't sing and i can't play an instrument so i am grateful that you were up there doing um so i can enjoy the music you know and just mm -hmm. and worship in god's presence while you do all the work <laughs> but who do you draw your influence from in your in your music i mean who do you listen to um because i know like musicians they do have i won't say your favorite artist but they do draw influence from certain artists so they can become better in their craft um yeah i don't know if i would have a specific musician that i i guess that would be a big influence on me like i mean i guess as far as you know me playing the guitar you know i definitely listen to like a lot of like you know, Hillsong, Hillsong worship, um, you know, Elevation worship, Bethel music, Jesus culture, you know, like, so I kind of listen to a lot of that. And, you know, they have their guitar players, like the lead guitar and the rhythm guitar. So I try to, I wouldn't say that I would emulate that, but, you know, as far as, I guess, trying to, I guess the sound, you know, I kind of want it to sound kind of similar to that kind of like the modern you know worship guitar player um yeah i mean honestly really before coming to one-to-one -one faith you know i never i mean i've had a little bit of experience playing the guitar but i mean it was really mainly just based on like lessons that i had that i took when i was like in middle school and i stopped i stopped playing after that and actually really this this maybe a couple months before that i kind of started picking up the guitar a little bit just kind of practicing here and there because i was at the previous church i was playing the keyboard so i was doing that i was mainly focused on the keyboard there so 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 yeah yeah as far as influence you know i would kind of say the modern worship you know bands i guess so that answers your question yeah that's that's great i i love elevation music i love hillsong um i when i first came to christ it was actually a hillsong one of the hillsong songs that really made me break down and i don't cry mm -hmm. and that's when my spirit was really speaking to me at the time and at the time i didn't understand who the, the holy spirit but something just broke in me and and so it was a waterfall of tears and i always believe that god grabs our tears and and make it into a waterfall into blessings that's what i tell people all the time so but you're also a teacher so i had the blessing and the honor because i always think that it's a blessing and an honor when you get the opportunity to hear other people teach and we don't have a high platform um like uh, like pastors do that have big churches um like pastor john has his own platform because he's the the lead pastor of our church so they all have a platform and um but one to one faith has given you that opportunity to have that um platform in as a teacher now i i know pastor john calls you brother darren i like to call you teacher darren because that's who you are you're just a brother we we know you're a brother of christ but your calling is also as a teacher so i had the pleasure of listening to well when the chrome of a hit you had to do the first one <clears throat> on youtube so i will provide that provide that link to from the, your teachings on wednesday which was really really good and we, and um so i would love for other people to hear your teaching so what influence what made you decide to be a teacher because that is a big responsibility and we are higher we, according to the bible we have a higher accountability which mm -hmm. kind of 
scary a little bit. Uh, but what what made you decide you wanted to go go this route as as a teacher? Do you want to become a pastor, or this, or you just want to be a teacher? or a mentor, what made you decide? Was it a God calling or was it a, a, a self-will calling, you can say? Mm -hmm. Sure, uh, definitely. Uh, I would definitely say that it's a God calling because like, I never really had the desire to be a teacher. But I remember a few years back, I think it was like maybe 2015 or 2016, I got, a, I guess, a word of knowledge from the pastor at the church that I was going to at the time that I basically had a a teacher's anointing and um yeah so i kind of i kind of took that you know kind of you know just kept it in mind and you know 2016 i came to bloomington and you know i went to a church you know you know when initially when i came to bloomington and um and yeah basically the pastor there just asked me if, you know i if i wanted to speak and you know i was kind of like yeah so that was that was really my first time. I think it was probably 27, I think it was 2017, maybe 2018, where I had my first, you know, message that I spoke. And um, yeah, they they seemed to like it. And, you know, they pastor, you know, continued to let me teach. Um, it may be like, you know, every two or three months, something like that, I would, I would have a, I would, you know, teach a, a sermon basically. And um, yeah, you know, I've, I've, I think I've just kind of been, you know, increasing. And actually the funny thing is another, uh, I guess, a, almost like a God thing happened was like, I think one day, you know, I was, this was like after work or it was in the middle of the day and I met this guy and he just happened to be, he's like a, I think he's like a pastor from Carmel or something like that. And he had like, I think his family lived in Bloomington. And um, he had a um, he had a book basically about you know you know I guess um, speaking a message basically preaching it was about preaching and you know I just happened to randomly meet him and um, basically he he let me have that book and that that book really helped me to prepare messages and stuff like that and so I definitely felt like God had 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 orchestrated that situation for me. So um, definitely, I think it's a God calling and, you know, I'm just trying to do my best to do, uh, to teach and to edify, you know, the body of Christ. So, so yeah. Well, you basically answered one of my questions. I was like, who is your influencers when it comes to your teaching style? So, um, and that's awesome because we do have, I think a lot of times we, we try to be like other teachers and we, cause we like their style, but at the end of the day, we still have to find our own style. We still got to find what God is calling us, how to, how to teach. Cause I know that I also struggle with how should I teach people in my women's ministry so they can get the greatest understanding. But my teaching style is definitely different than your teaching style. Um, uh, but uh, I focus a lot on the, the Hebrew part of the teaching, giving back people to the Old Testament and bringing it to to the New Testament. So I can I connect it in that way. Um, but yeah, I, I just I just love your teachings. Um, they're they're very good. They're very educational, and they make you really think. And I think that when your teaching can make someone think, and not not about others, about yourself. And touch that part about yourself you're doing a great job <laughs> you know so yeah and like i said i will link all that when when one to one faith um puts that up and i'll link your youtube channel with your your uh, your last message that you have provided um i think that um um that people need to hear your message so so the biggest question here is like we know we're dealing with a lot of civil unrest and with mm -hmm. racism and and a lot of it uh, affects the the black and brown community but it also affects higher the black and brown men too and um so i was looking at some statistics and in this country uh 83 percent of black americans consider, consider themselves christians okay 
and only 1% Muslims and Jewish, you know, they're black Jewish as well too, but they don't separate themselves necessarily by race. Um, but they, they say I'm Jewish and they leave it like that. But anyway, um, but what, I don't know if you know a little bit about this history is that during slavery time, I know my family came from slaves. I don't know if your family came from slaves because I know not all black Americans came from slavery, but my family has. And there was something that was challenged to me several years ago watching a movie pointing out that some of the slaves were Muslims. And I didn't know if you knew any part of that slavery history. And so they're predicting about 15 to 30 percent of enslaved Africans were, were Muslims, which most Black Americans follow some form of faith. So, and um, so I thought that was very interesting. So, so black, so slaves were converted into Christianity. Who? So I'm assuming the other slaves were not Christians, they were from other pagan religions, where well, we all came from paganism. But I just thought it was interesting because they also show um, when some black Americans discover this information, they go, they convert back into the Muslim faith. And, and for me, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I have Muslim friends, I have Jewish friends, I have all friends, atheists and stuff like that. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking to myself, I said, but the greatest love for me was knowing Jesus. The greatest love for me is knowing the Holy Spirit. Because, you know, we worship the same God of Abraham, the Christian, Muslims, and Jewish. So, but it's Jesus that makes the difference for me. And so I feel like Jesus is the puzzle to my faith. Jesus is the reason why I'm a Christian because I, my saying is that my family made me a Christian. My faith makes me a Christian. So it's, my, it's all about my faith. But for me, the racism in the church is very hard to deal with. And mm -hmm. I have to hold on to Christ to deal with bro my brothers and sisters in faith, Christians, who do not like me because of the base of my color. <clears throat> or, or and so in America, and that's what we're dealing right now. So how do you, in this time, I know, I know you say you don't pay attention to the news. I do, <laughs> you know, but I have to know my enemy. That's how I feel, that's my personal opinion. So, how do you deal with the the criticism of not supporting black churches because i tithe and I, i'm sure you tithe too because we that's mm -hmm. part of our christian faith as we tithe into the kingdom we invest into the kingdom and then knowing that that there are churches out there that might black churches that might criticize that we don't support them and by not we're not support, supporting the black community, which is a false narrative. Mm -hmm. We know that, that's the enemy telling us lies. So we know that's a false narrative. Um, so how do you face those criticism when people say that we're not supporting the black churches and the black community when we don't go to the predominant black church? How do you deal with those issues? Knowing that we're dealing with civil unrest when it comes to white Christians who are obviously racist and bigots, and and knowing that that we can't, as a black person, some churches, some white churches, we cannot walk in and worship with them because of the color of our skin. How do you deal with those issues? Yeah, that's a good question. So I guess, I mean, I guess I can only speak personally for me. Like I've never really. Me myself, I really haven't experienced racism in in the church. Like I've experienced, you know, being stereotyped in other settings. But I guess in the church, I really, I guess racism really hasn't been something that I've experienced. You know, even I guess even you know, kind of growing up, like I guess race was never a big thing for me. Like you know, I was you know, my my parents kind of told me about it a little bit, but it was never really a big thing for me. Because I remember 
because you know my parents you know they you know most of the churches that they went to that they took me to i mean they're predominantly black churches and i remember this um this one time we i think we had left the church and we had started visiting churches and my mom took me to a church near our house and it was like predominantly white church and you know i i honestly i liked it it was when i was younger probably middle school or something like that and i had asked you know my mom you know like why don't we just start going to this church and and i think i don't remember exactly what she said but i think it may have been like you know there aren't people there that look like us and you know she kind of said it's kind of like a kind of a comfort zone type thing but yeah i guess for me like you know i've been uh, just you know even when i started going to churches on my own like i've been to the i've been to i've gone to majority black churches i've gone to churches where the majority was like you know people from africa and i've been to the majority white churches you know so it's been a mix you know for me um i guess as far as the uh, criticism you know from black churches you know um i don't know i guess i would say that you know really you know for those churches i mean they're really their 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 source should be from god you know if if they're focused on god you know they should realize that god is ultimately the one that provides uh for them you know so if they're you know if they're supposed to be you know christian you know their 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 provider is god you know their provider is jesus and you know even if it's not you know me or you supporting their church personally you know they should they shouldn't really rely on, even though that people pay tithes, you know, they, of course, you know that, but, you know, I think they should, you know, focus on, you know, getting the gospel and doing what God has called that church to do. And if they're doing what God has called them to do, then the provision will be there, you know, regardless of, you know, every black person is supporting them. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I think definitely, you know, based on what's happening now you know there's a lot of division here going on and yeah it's it's definitely divisive and i thought i thought this there is there is a message that i listened to a few years back by this pastor he's he's a pastor in texas i don't know if you're familiar with him i think his name is robert morris and um he uh, he had this great illustration like there's like a, a water bottle and there's like two people looking at the water bottle and one person is looking at the front of the water bottle and the other person is looking at the the back of the water bottle and basically what he was saying is that you know that person looking at the front of the water bottle see only sees that front you know they don't see the back of that water bottle and they and and that and that's kind of their viewpoint and it's the same with the other person looking at the back of the water bottle you know they they see two different viewpoints but it's really the same bottle and I think he was saying that, you know, they just need to come together and, and both of them need to look at both sides of the bottle and see how, and this can be, this can be tied into people's experiences, how they are raised, you know, a white person may not be able to, to, you know, understand what, you know, a black person is going through or a black person may not understand what a white person has gone through and, you know, being raised, you know, through, through their lives. And I think if there is just more compassion and you know seeing different viewpoints and just kind of come together and saying oh, okay I, I understand where you're coming from now you know even though i might not agree 100 percent, but i at least have some understanding of why you think this way of why you have this viewpoint so i think there just needs to be you know more unity in the church and really in the country as a whole that would definitely be a help in yeah. my opinion mm -hmm. i i totally agree and one thing that god um places in my heart he does not like oppression mm -hmm. and uh oppression is very prevalent in the world and in, in mm -hmm. our country and we should be a leader in in doing away with any form of oppression and it doesn't matter your race uh, if if someone feels oppressed it doesn't matter if you're a white male or a black male or a brand brown male it does it doesn't matter if there is any form of oppression the discrimination it should not be in our kingdom. It's not, it's not part mm -hmm. of God's kingdom. And that's how I look at, that's the lens I look at if there's any form of oppression in the situation. If it's denying someone's rights to prosper, to live and to be happy and be in peace. The worst thing to do is live in a neighborhood 
and you can't leave, but there's no peace and there's always war because there so war brings anger so we have to live in peace and that is in harmony and unity like you said so uh, so last question so what what are your plans what has god is placing in your heart right now you're a musician you're a teacher i see a great ministry in both fields for myself uh, i've enjoyed both of you, your talent, and I'm pretty sure you have a lot more talent that, that is hidden, but, uh, but what has God placed in your heart? Is it continuing to, to teach? I mean, I know you're going to continue teaching, but traveling with your teaching or, or, you know, what has God have placed in your heart right now? Um, I guess right now, um, it's really just kind of a, a wait and see thing. Like, I, I don't feel like, I don't feel like specifically God has opened a door right now as far as traveling, but you know, right now I'm just really trying to be sensitive to, you know, the, 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 the doors that God may have for me that, that, that he might open. So just really just trying to, um, you know, keep on going with the teaching, keep on going with the playing with the, with the guitar and yeah, just really just focusing on, on God and seeking him to, lead me in the right direction you know whether that's you know going somewhere going you know out of the state or even out of the country so i'm always it's all i think it's always good to be open to what god you know wants you to do you know just so you know you're you know just 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 so that you know you're flexible you know flexibility is just definitely one of those things that i'm trying to be you know so if god wants me to you know go to this place and you know okay i'll, I'll go there so yeah, really, it's just, um, yeah, I mean, I don't really have any specific plans right now, just really just seeking God and continually continuing to just do what I'm doing and be consistent. And I know that eventually, you know, God will open the correct door that he wants me to walk through. I think you said a key word there. You might not realize that you said it, that God's will for you to be flexible that that i think that was your i think that was it right there be flexible be ready to go when you can and he would definitely provide provide that for you um to be able to go i know uh god had told me to get my visa several years ago uh to, so i can travel out of the country but of course the coronavirus is is preventing that so i hope i pray that that door will open up again so i'm not too worried about that right now but i just want to say thank you for your time and um i appreciate um interviewing and talking to you and just getting your insight about the world your teachings and your ministry because you know we all have a, our own ministry even though if, even if we want to accept it or not um but i want us to pray out really quickly and so Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this opportunity to, um, to speak with Darren, your teacher of the word. And I just thank you for giving him the heart to teach because he has so much knowledge. He has so much spirit in him that he needs to share with the world. We are in a broken world. We're in a confused world. We are also in an uncivil, we're under, um, under the civil unrest world right now and i know that it's always been there but and i know that you have helped many many people to get through it but i just want to bless darren and his ministry and to pull forward where people of all races and all sexes can draw comfort from his word can just draw that that word that you have given to him and just be patient and to bring hope and edify you within that. And I thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. yes.